So we've had a chance to play all three of the big FPS games releasing this fall, but which beta stands above them all? Well, in this video, I answer that question. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So the gaming community as a whole, we've had a chance to play Call of Duty, we've played Halo, and now we've played Battlefield. And so people are starting to accumulate their opinions about which one of these early access multiplayer builds ended up being the best experience for gamers out there. And while it seems to be a certain type of trend leaning towards, uh, well, one of our favorite games. But why is it that the gaming community as a whole has really enjoyed Halo Infinite? Well, in this video, I answer that question. So if you guys like these analytical kind of videos, make sure you tap that like button as it lets me know you wanna see some more content like this and it greatly helps out the video and channel get a better place within the YouTube algorithm. And if you wanna stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as it ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite, make sure you tap subscribe so let's get right into the content here. So first let's jump into what's kind of the current news right now and that is the current Battlefield beta that's going on right now. And while the core gameplay aspect of it does feel pretty good, it is very rough around the edges. There have been multiple YouTube videos I've seen going around the internet showcasing these random glitches of like people floating within the air, graphical glitches as well, and just really awkward kind of situations where like you end up dying for no reason or you get stuck underneath the map and things like that. There's just a lot of really weird things happening currently right now in the Battlefield 2042 beta where the gameplay, like I said, is really good, but there are just like these glaring graphical issues and also just random things like that going on with the game right now, which really just affects the gameplay experience and has a really rough around the edges kind of experience while playing. This clip right here is from the act man showcasing like these really choppy animations of climbing the ladder. Now this is, isn't just like the ladder animation because who really cares, but this is just really kind of animations in general from my experience of playing the beta that really are some very janky animations, very choppy kind of stuff. This could be something that like DICE is kind of currently working on right now to kind of just like have some very basic animations to ease off on some of the performance load on your PC and Xbox or console, whatever you want to play on. But seeing things like this throughout the entirety of the game when it comes to just like tank animations, weapon animations, going up ladders, things like that. These little things like this throughout the entirety of the beta really gives us rough around the edges kind of experience that makes you kind of concerned because this game is releasing in a month. Now DICE has stated this is an older build which totally makes sense. It'll probably be a little bit more stable for, for the general public to play but again this is stable, I guess is the way to put it really. Uh, so a lot of people have experienced some really odd things happening with this game. So it's not the most polished experience that people have really been enjoying playing the game. I will say that the core aspect of Battlefield 2042 is certainly there, has a very much more of a Battlefield 4 kind of a feel to the whole thing, which I've really enjoyed. But like I said, there's just been like these rough edges around the entirety of the experience of playing the game that makes you kind of wonder, okay, so, how bugless is this beta going to be? But Battlefield isn't the only game that's been having some beta woes. Call of Duty Vanguard certainly had its issues as well. Not so much with the performance from what I've heard, so it definitely was performing a lot better than Battlefield's beta, but a big issue was some of the core aspects of the game that people were talking about, especially like with the audio, with gunplay sounding super muffled, the almost non-existent footsteps, which in Call of Duty are super important for player awareness and have a better experience while playing the game. Mentioned about a lot of visual distortion from like gunfire blocking up your enemy so you can't see. The sun in this game guys is absolutely insane if you thought battlefield 3 needed to nerf the sun wait till you see the sun in this game because the sun in call of duty vanguard is legitimately op like it is insane how much screen real estate that sun takes up like it's absolutely absurd now since call of duty vanguard is using the modern warfare 2019 engine the issue that comes with Modern Warfare 2019 engine is the spawning system. And yeah, the spawns were in this game were absolutely awful as well. Multiple times people would spawn directly behind players and it would just be complete chaos the entire time, which is like no logic, with no sense was being used about how these spawns are being decided within the game. And leaning for another poor experience, you had the cheating that was going on within the beta as well. Now they do say with Sledgehammer that the anti-cheat that's coming with the game that's brand new has not been implemented yet though 
I imagine just like cheating already within this beta is was already massive and it's crazy to see that like people are already doing that. I do hope that when the game finally releases that cheating does reduce quite a bit because currently it's a big issue right now within the Call of Duty franchise, especially in Warzone. But we'll just have to wait and see to wonder if actually the anti-cheat that's going to be implemented in Call of Duty will actually stop the cheating. My guess would probably be no because it's a never ending battle against cheaters, but you know, we'll keep an eye on it for sure. But Halo Infinite's flight certainly had its bugs as well. There was a really big graphical issue where like half the map geometry just would not spawn into the game, which is really odd. And some weird hitches here and there for the most part. So maybe you can shot around the corner. Of course, like the amazing glitch of like spawning like a million different wet floor signs and stuff like that. It was kind of crazy. But for the most part, the flight experience of playing Halo Infinite was probably the best experience out of, well, everyone's time playing out of all these three major early access versions of the big three that are coming out this fall. But out of the big three of the games that we've had a chance to play for early access, Halo Infinite's beta slash technical preview slash flight, whatever you want to call it, has been widely held as the best version of all these early access games because all the bugs and issues that were actually in the early access flight for Halo Infinite were not necessarily that game breaking or very rare where it comes to like Call of Duty and Battlefield's issues were very common amongst the entirety of the community. I mean, don't take my word for it. Check out the general gaming community as a whole. They agree with me on this one. That Halo Infinite's early access was definitely the best one out of them all. Popular YouTuber The Act Man here is saying, to everyone saying that it's just a beta in regards to Battlefield 2042, that's exactly my point. It's a terrible beta. This is the worst first impression I could possibly have of the game. Halo Infinite's BTB tech preview was light years ahead of this. Modern Warzone Twitter, which has a massive following of 425,000 followers, so even said this saying I think Halo Infinite will have the best multiplayer out of all the major FPS releases this holiday. Even stating that that doesn't really line up with them because they're a COD chill because they're called a news kind of location. But after playing all three betas, Halo Infinite fell above and beyond the best multiplayer. A tweet here has been making its rounds through the community here of gaming saying that Kotaku Halo Infinite was a buggy mess. But when you look at 2042 for Battlefield and also Vanguard, these images kind of tell the story about which one was really a buggy mess. This is the Kotaku article in mention right here, saying it was a buggy mess and it was frequently hilarious. But when I actually read the article, it actually became much more positive reflection to the game because the entirety of this article really digs into like why Halo Infinite was such a fun, really great time. There's only one little section which I highlighted in red, which actually has some criticisms saying the build I played from about two and a half months ago and came with a suite of nigh unbearable known bugs, including memory leaks, multiple crashes, a broken party system, graphical card specific performance issues, and more dropped games than I could count among my eight person party at any given time at least two of us were experiencing some game breaking issues now my experience when playing the halo infinite flight that i didn't really have this many of issues in fact the party system for me worked totally fine i was on my stream when i was playing with viewers it was a great time we had no issues when it comes to trying to like keep the party together I may have crashed like one or two times throughout the whole play session. And the performance actually improved between the weeks as well, between weekend one and weekend two of this most recent flight. Where yeah, it wasn't perfect, certainly has room for improvement, but it was certainly good enough. But I think what really plays into Halo Infinite's favor, why people are saying that this is the best beta experience is because the gameplay for Halo Infinite might just be the best out of the three. Because to me, I would say that Halo Infinite kind of feels like if Halo 3 was made in 2021. Because you have equipment returning with Halo Infinite, which definitely calls back to Halo 3, but the difference is that the equipment is much more tamed and much more physics and sandbox based compared to Halo 3's equipment, which really kind of lended you to get free kills, which is pretty annoying. And the stuff that you could just pull off in Halo Infinite was just genuinely more fun than what you can do in Battlefield's early access and what you can do in Call of Duty's early access. And also the gameplay itself for like Call of Duty Vanguard, if people have been criticizing it as just basically just a copy paste job with a World War II skin for Modern Warfare kind of gameplay right there. Uh, people have been criticizing Battlefield 2042. I mean, I, from when I played it, it felt like I was playing Battlefield 4 with just a few new features. 
or Halo Infinite really feels to be calling back to the nature of what made the games so great for Halo, but also pushing the franchise forward as well for a more modern, exciting experience. I mean, I created this short kind of trolling about the grapple shot, but it totally makes sense. And I think it compares super well. This right here is my favorite thing ever in the history of forever. I think about this every day. I think about this all night long. I stay awake, not sleeping because I'm thinking about this. And the trends even seem to show on Google as well, where a Forbes article showcased right here how Halo Infinite is actually trending above Battlefield and Call of Duty. So in a battle of the betas, who seemed to come out on top? Well, I think Halo Infinite wins. If you guys are new to the channel or missing any content from me recently, check out the playlist right here. I got a link to all my Halo news and informational videos right there. We've been uploading daily about. So thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.